Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey, and today we're continuing our rankings episodes, moving into running back ranks today. Today will be part one. We're going to do the top 15 running backs. Last week we did quarterback, so if you have not heard that yet, make sure you go check out our quarterback ranks episode. We went one through 32 on those episodes, so go check that out. And let's just jump into this thing, Jeff. No intros, no nothing else. Let's go. Just go. Just just pure ranks. How about that? Number one on our running back rank for 2020. I don't really think this is a surprise, is it? We don't have to talk about this guy too much. It's Christian McCaffrey, number one. Easy number one. There's no debate. It's just, it's simple. I hate the debate that people try to say, well, no, people don't finish number one two years in a row. Well, they do. It happens, especially if you're as good as Christian McCaffrey is. I mean, the, I say the only question can be he has a new quarterback, but he played last year with Kyle Allen half the time or most of the time. So it's easy, right? Christian McCaffrey, number one. And that's about all I have. Yeah. The, will he get better? <laughs> when, I mean, yeah, he's, he's just so good. There's just. He catches a hundred balls. He runs a ball. I mean, yeah, and and it's just easy. to put an emphasis on it, last year he averaged twenty two point two points per game. He did not miss one game. Um, and the next closest running back to him was Derrick Henry, who had an amazing year and averaged eighteen point four. So yep. a nearly Pretty four good. point difference per game it is unreal. Yep. All right, so that's it. That's all yeah. I got for McCaffrey. Done. We'll go number two. These number one, two, and three, I think, are pretty simple. Two, it's Saquon. And, but you know, okay, I guess it's his numbers last year weren't as great as year one, but obviously he's still really good. And, I mean, I'm not worried. He was hurt somewhat. I mean, Daniel Jones, rookie quarterback, it wasn't quite there, but he obviously is still Saquon. He's still really, really good. He's still got 1,000 yards in 13 games. Hopefully the catches go up a little more. He only had 52 compared to the 91 year one. Not really worried about him. He's he's that good. He's one of the, I mean, best running backs in the league. So Saquon number two. That's an easy number two for us. Just really nothing else to it. No, <laughs> so, we can we can move on. Honestly, I feel number three, that comfortable with it. Number three, is Zeke. Zeke's number three. He is just consistent. I would say really, really consistent. He's a really good running back. He's going to get probably another 300 carries. If if he doesn't get 300 carries, he's what going to get 275 maybe. But most likely he'll get 300 carries again, and he'll get a bunch of he'll get all the goal line work. He you know he catches the ball a decent amount, not as much last year as the year before, but he's going to at least worst case get you 50 catches. Worst case, he just he's consistently going to get the ball. You don't have to worry about it. He's stays decently healthy he stays on the field i mean he gets banged up a bit but he stay, he stays on the field he plays and there's just no worries there with zeke too much he's gonna he's on a great offense too yeah and you gotta love that i think the offense you, you can't stress that enough i mean mccaffrey's kind of an anomaly that he gets in the end zone so much for a team that is you know maybe a 500 team yep at best <clears throat> but um for him and for Dallas, this is why you always wonder how it's going to shake out why you know if you do have doubts about Dak or anything like that I mean, look, last year, Dak did really well, but last year, Zeke put up 12 rushing touchdowns. Um, You know, the two years before that, he had six, he had seven. His rookie year, he had 15. So he's capable of of kind of bouncing around, but getting double digits should not be shocking. And I feel like his pass catching, uh, even though it fluctuates a little bit with uh, how many many targets he gets, um, it seems to be, you know, the year before was 95, last year was 71. So it all depends on how they use them, but the touchdowns and the yardage, really similar. Yep. So I, I feel like the only thing you're going to get different is maybe touchdowns. So I think he is incredibly safe for a top five, top five uh, running back for sure. But that's why I love him at number three. Uh, yeah. I, these three are um, in stone for me. Like I wouldn't move them around at all. No, I, I got stuff playing here. I'm actually <laughs> trying to pull up a question here quick. I had, a, I, had a, I had an Instagram question here. I wanted, wanted you to see here. I'm playing random highlights of baseball games. So here's the question from Daniel Simpson on Instagram. It was just simple. It ties into running back in a little bit here. So he says, what would be the right pick with the third pick in a PPR draft after McCaffrey and Saquon go one, two? So do you still go Zeke or in PPR, would you go Michael Thomas? I would still go Zeke. Yeah. Okay. Me too. I'm going to go Zeke. I'm still going to go Zeke there. And 
I mean, I know Michael Thomas in PPR is very, very intriguing, but I think Zeke is just, just too. I would consider Thomas at four, maybe. I'd in full PPR possibly I start looking at it there, but uh, I think it's still Zeke at three. So to me, that's tier one, right? I think if you want to give a tier one, it's McCaffrey, Barkley, Zeke. That's tier one of running backs. It's I think pretty clear cut. Here we go. I think then I believe we have a, a tier two of three running backs as well. And so Jeff, it's funny thing enough. We have the exact same top six. Exactly oh. the same this year. So number four, I'll just go with the next three guys here. Dalvin Cook is four. Alvin Kamara is five. And Derrick Henry is six. So that's where how we ranked them. And consensus-wise, a little different. So if you go with the consensus ranks, it's Kamara, Cook, Henry. If you go with ADP, it's the same way. So we just switched Kamara and Cook. That's the only thing we switched here. And I think part of it with Dalvin Cook was the hesitation about will he show up? You know, will he hold out? You know, that was kind of early on, you know, the worry. And I don't think that's going to be a worry. I think they're getting a deal done. He showed up to do his test. He showed up there. They're working on an extension. I think they want him there. He wants to be there. It's going to happen, right? These running backs, they can't keep holding out. It doesn't seem to work. So I don't think Dalvin Cook's going to make that mistake. I know then the other thing is going to be what people are worried about injury. And I'm just not, I don't like to, I'm not that worried about injury with him. He was just so good when he got the chance to play. And I'm, I'm so cook, cook four for me. That's why, I mean, he's just, he's that good. He's, and they're going to run the ball a lot. They did last year. They showed they want to run the ball with cook and they, the, the, you know, the passes were way down to cousins. I know it's not the same offense coordinator, but Kubiak likes to run the ball too. So, yeah, I think, I think you hit on it. I think talent alone, he is number four. I think he can do everything that, for the most part, you know, McCaffrey, Zeke, and Saquon can do. I think he's that talented. I think the only reason he's not in that tier one, he's only done it for one year. And the health thing is an issue, yeah. but you can't discount talent. So, you know, his talent would put him up with this second tier. And that's why he's number four for me. That's why he heads that tier. Because you get him, you know you're going to get production. Last year he averaged 17.1. He did miss two games. But it was very obvious he was going to be the the guy in Minnesota. Nothing is going to change on that. Yep. All right. So our number five was Alvin Kamara. Okay. And people, this is the one that people are going to get angry at, right? And I, and I get it. Derrick Henry was phenomenal last year. Alvin Kamara, you know, not as much. He, he fell off a little bit last year. So he did. Okay. He did. Yes. Right. But when you look at the actual, let's say, numbers here it's really i mean obviously the touchdowns dropped and that's where he dropped and hopefully that can come back you'd never know or is now his second year is that just a fluke that's my worry too so in 2018 he had 14 touchdowns running the ball he caught four last year he had five running the ball and only caught one so way down 18 to six he his carries were slightly down but he played one less game so he had 23 less carries he did play one less game he wouldn't have got 23 carries in that game but still, it would have been similar. And his yards per carry were actually 0.1 better last year than it was the year before. It's just the volume was almost there. The catches, 81 catches. He's had 81 catches all three of his seasons of the league. 81 is rookie year, 81 is second year, 81 is third year. The yardage went way down, though, um, about 170 down. Then again, if he plays one more game that he didn't play, maybe his numbers are a little higher. I don't think it's as far off as people think. It is off. Yes, it, obviously, it was down. Those touchdowns, though, it feels slightly fluky that it went down. That's where I'm. I think, well, I think it's hugely fluky, yeah. and that's that's the reason why I don't mind putting him up here. And I think they do need him because him and Michael Thomas are the two major mm-hmm. weapons on that offense. You still have Drew Brees, um, you have Emmanuel Sanders that should help a little bit, um, and you have Jared Cook, so you have good like uh, ancillary kind of players. The weirdest part about, I mean, it it was almost like you know how we joked about how Julio couldn't get into the end zone? Like there'd be long stretches and then he would blow up, right? Well, it felt like he was about to turn it around because he only had one touchdown rushing until he hit, oh, which week was that? Yeah, week, week 16. And in the final two games, he scored four rushing touchdowns. Yep. It was, I mean, that stretch of not scoring a touchdown was, that is what my definition of fluky would be. There's no re- no reason for it, nothing that you can really account for it. And on top of that, you look at it, I do think he was a little bit banged up last year. Yes, he missed two games, but then again, he was only technically the starter in nine of them. That shouldn't really happen this year. So I, I still like him. If you're PPR, 
I, I think this is still a no-brainer because he's going to catch a lot more balls than Henry, and you don't have to worry about that that being the difference maker, you know, because those that PPR will definitely help make that up. But um, yeah, I'm I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. I, I like him still. He is an incredibly talented individual, and I think those touchdowns will return. All right, and then number six is Derrick Henry. So Henry, I don't know. People it? love Henry. <laughs> I mean, he was really, really good towards the end of last year. I mean, he was, and then, then in the first two games of the playoffs, I mean, this guy was just ridiculously good. I mean, it was it, just kind of, re- the numbers just speak for themselves. Like the last regular season game, he had two, 32 carries for 211 yards, and you go in the playoffs, 34 for 182, 30 for 195. Like, that's insane. Oh, it's a lot. I, the only thing I can think in my head is you need him to win, so you have to try to keep him fresh to a certain extent. It does not mean you're not going to give him these large loads and you're, you're not going to let him just you know go ham on everyone. But the biggest one for me, and I, this is why I believe he can do it again. This is why I put him up here. And this is why I can understand if you wanted to take him over mm-hmm. an Elvin Kamara, right? I, I get that one. That would not bother me that much. These That second tier, not as much in... Uh, you know, in stone, even if you wanted to talk about Delvin cook, I would have that conversation. Yep. But the big one is the first three years, we kind of always wondered, you know, why, why are you guys trying to spell him with Deion Lewis? Why are you trying to mix it up? Why are you doing all this? And in 2018, you saw it really like you started seeing it and you got really excited about it. And he had 215 rushes for just over a thousand yards, 12 TDs. Great. He does not catch the ball. Don't expect him to. Yeah, but that's not gonna happen. last year, the biggest reason he can do this is because he finally got what I will call big boy numbers. When it, when you come come for attempts, he got 303 rushes. He turned that into 1500 yards and 16 touchdowns. I don't see a world where he gets less than and assuming he plays and that was in 15 games. Right. So say he gets 15 games again. I mean, if he's not in the high 200s, if he's not 270, 275, I would be shocked. And if he does play a full season, he'll hit 300 again. I do expect maybe not quite these crazy of numbers because he had some really crazy, bizarre games that are just phenomenal. But his yard per average is not that far off. I mean, rookie year, 4.5, then 4.2, then 4.9 and 5.1. So last year, obviously, a little bit of a jump, um, especially for getting more carries. It, it crap ton more. So – I don't know. He's he's a freak of nature. He's a really big back. He's still young. You know, make you know, make hay while the sun shines. This guy is gonna be good. Yep. All right, so that's tier two, right? So this is where we gotta figure out what's what is tier three. <laughs> so we were kind of I would say all over the place in our ranks between each other. We were top six, we're right on target. This next group were not as much and I think it makes sense, though, because these players, I mean, you can mix and match these guys, I think. So now let's figure out what this tier I'll, is. Okay, I'm, I'll am i make a prediction, yeah. and then we can go into yeah. it. But my guess is 7 to 11 will be another tier. Because I it's, feel like those are, and for me, yeah, those are when you can really mix them up. That's about where we have it, but it's there's a couple players that I have. There's a player I have in that group that you don't, and there's a player you have that I don't. Okay. Well, so, let's get into it. Where's uh So, 7 through 10, we'll just say that first off. 7 through 10 are a tie in the way oh, really? our consensus works. Oh, yes. Wow. And then the 11th is just barely behind. Okay. So, it's kind of funny how this works out. So, here are the here are the players. So, 7 through let's go 7 through 10 that actually tied for our ranks. It's Mixon, Aaron Jones, Josh Jacobs, Nick Chubb. And then the 11th is Miles Sanders. So, Okay, I'm um obviously much yes. higher in Miles. Yeah, and so that is kind of the tier. It's it's these guys are similar, I think. And you, oh, say that again. So you so had it's it's Mixon, Jones, Jacobs, Chubb, Sanders. Okay, so here uh, actually, no, I don't mind that at all. I, I knew that there was going to be a few that kind of threw uh, a wrench in that. Yep. But well, so let's get it out. So Mixon here. Let's go with Mixon first. So I had Mixon well, seventh. Okay. Oh, then okay. Yeah, we can talk about Mixon. All right, I was going to go a different route. Seventh, right. and you had him twelfth. So we're five spots difference on Mixon okay. here. I just love I've loved Mixon from day one. And He's he, a it, very talented player. My my question when you're you're ranking him up against and there's something you can yep. kind of nitpick about each one of these guys, right? And that's why they they fall a little bit, you know, in the back end of the tenth, um, back end of the top ten, I should say. Um, 
for Mixon, are you you're thinking that Joe Burrow will help his ability to run? Because last well, year he was able to get it done, but it was it was pretty brutal to watch. I mean, it was grinding it out. Do you think yeah, that is going to get that much better? It was it was a lot better in the second half of last season. And that's what I'm kind of looking at. Is second half of last season, he started to turn it around. So if I go pull up, let's, I'm going to pull up a number and make sure I'm good. Um, so if you take weeks 9 through 17, you take the second half of last season, he was the fifth best running back. from, And this is standard scoring. Fifth best running back from weeks 9 through 17. He was only behind Henry, McCaffrey, Kenyon Drake, and Zeke. He was ahead of Saquon. He was ahead of Aaron Jones. He's had a bunch of these guys last year. Over those, over an into a second, a half of a season. That's not just like I'm not just picking. Oh, through weeks 11 through 13, he was you know. Right, right, right. This is this is a this is a half of a season where he in weeks even like go like 13, 14, and then 16. So 13, he would 23 carries, 146, 14, 25 carries, 136, and the 16, 16th game he went 26 carries, 162. He was really turning it on. I do think Burrow is going to. I think there's something about Joe Burrow. I just feel like that guy's a winner. Uh, I don't know. I just see it might, t- it might take a second for to do that in Cincinnati, but I feel like he's going to bring out the best in this team. And I really like Mixon to begin with. I think the talents there, and they started. He started to come around last year at the end of the year, and I think it'll just be better this year. Yeah, and, and to your point, once again, I, I just say he got 275 carries. That is a healthy amount. I I could see him getting there again, even with Burrow. Maybe not quite as many. Yep. But um, I think that is good. And the once again, I, I think it is a little fluky when running backs of this caliber, they go over 1,000 yards, get low touchdown right numbers. Yeah. And yeah. he only had five rushing. Yep. And that is kind of the reason why he, he jumped up in that second half is because all of his rushing touchdowns came from week 10 and on. So, that I mean, that is the big difference. He, he catches enough to be, you know, to count – the receptions, but that's nothing special. But maybe Burrow does change that as well. You know, they're going to be I, – I kind of I, – I wonder if um, – and this goes against my point because I have them lower than you. But I do wonder in that in that case, right, it would be the same thing with how I talked the last episode about um, with the uh, ascension of Minshew to head quarterback or to, you know, QB number one. Um, Fournette was actually – his numbers jumped – in a big way, mm-hmm. receptions wise, right? Because you're trying to make it more quarterback friendly. I'm wondering if it'll be the same kind of thing. Like, okay, well, you know what? Like, he caught 35 balls last year. Like, I bet we can amp that up to 50 because we want to get Joe, you know, just comfortable in the system and want, you know, he's going to just loft a few out there to mix in in open field and try to get something done. So yep. I could see that being part of the game plan as well. So I could see all these numbers being able to improve a little bit. And I see that TD number. I feel like that could jump up to double digits quite possibly and no one even knowing the difference because of how poor the first half of the year was. Mm -hmm. Which guy do you want to talk about next in this little grouping? Well, I think the two that really um, that are the easiest ones and I kind of pair them together and we can talk about why they won't be as successful as they were last year, but Nick Chubb and Aaron Jones. I think Nick Chubb's going to be great. Well, I think he will too. The question is... I'm not worried about Cream Hunt. He's better than Cream Hunt. He is better. I think think Cream Hunt is very good. I have Chubb eight. Okay, yeah, and I have no problem with that. I like 11. Chubb. I do have an eleven. I like him a lot. I was kind of, I'm, I'm just, kind of waiting I'm, to see how everything I, I, turns out. I get the whole Kareem Hunt thing. I get that he's going to be a part. But I just think Nick Chubb is just better, and it's going to show. And I mean, Nick Chubb was really good last year. Fourteen hundred ninety-four yards, five yards a carry, eight touchdowns. It's a very good season. It's very good numbers. He's been really good for two seasons. My own, yo, he, he is very good. I do not doubt that at all. My my worry is 298, he almost had 300 carries, right? Yeah. And if you have him and Kareem Hunt, you yeah. know, why would you let him get quite that I, high? Why why yeah, wouldn't you true. cap it at, I'm not cap it, but why wouldn't you aim for more than uh, the you know, 250 range or something? You'd be taking away 50 carries. That does hurt him. And he has, you know, he got eight touchdowns rushing the past two years. So, I do. I don't worry that he's going to be eclipsed by Hunt, but I do worry that they will use Hunt in a strategic way in order to spell him because he. I mean, he he was running through people. It was very good, and one that line wasn't doing all that great either. Yep. Once again, they improved it, so I think that will help him. That that is where my worry comes in because yep. let's not forget, Cream Hunt was a, a monster only two years ago. Yeah, it's true. So that that's my worry, and these other guys, there's no one else there, well, and that's the big difference. Yeah, 
So Aaron Jones, the worry is touchdown regression. Yeah. That's, that's, that, a that's, real, that's a real worry, 100%. It, it was a lot of touchdowns, and he had a couple really big games that boosted up his probably his overall standing and you know at the end of the year. He ended up with, what, uh, 19 total touchdowns last year? Because his yardage was only just over 1,000 yeah. on 236 carries. You know what? People are saying, oh, AJ, was A.J. Dillon's there now, right? Could take away some, possibly from Jones. I don't think it's going to take away carries. I guess maybe you do have to worry about the red zone a little bit, but we haven't seen that yet. And I'm not – rookies this year, I don't know how it's going to play out, obviously. You know, it's just a different season. Maybe rookies won't factor in as much. We, no one knows. It's a guessing game. I'm just not going to worry too much about it. But So we you put Jones ninth. I put him 10th. I think that's solid. I think we are actually higher, though, on him. So consensus-wise, he's 13th right now. And consensus expert ranks, but he's going tenth in ADP. So we're pretty much yeah. in line with ADP. And I, I do, I get it, but it is it's difficult to discount him so much because everyone was, I mean, like what, 2018 when we were talking about yeah. Aaron Jones, everyone was like, why aren't you playing him more? Why? Yeah. And then they give him the carries, and I feel like this was the same thing with Henry. Almost, he didn't get near as many. He did this, which what was he? Was he third overall? Um, and, yeah. So yeah. he was third overall. He was only behind Christian McCaffrey and Derrick Henry last year. He did rush the ball in 16 times. And that is, and that's the worry, right? Well, even yeah. if that goes down to 10, which would still be a very I'm good sure year. it won't stay at 16. That's a no, pretty hard number either. to replicate. But once again, I don't think 236 rushes is anything you can't replicate. But, I don't think, but, you know. Yeah, that, if you drop him down to 10 touchdowns, maybe he does go ninth or 10th like we have him and not third like he finished. So right. people can say this, oh, Aaron Jones is going to fall off. Maybe he can. He can fall off. Well, he and, fell off to the still position be top, we're yeah. putting him He at. can fall off 210. Right. Like 29, 210. The That's only, the thing. Yeah. And the only person I, I put Chubb behind him, and that is the only one I worry about. I think Chubb, I actually like Chubb better as a player. Yep. But once again, I, I don't think that, I don't think that much of A.J. Dillon. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't think of any other running back on Green Bay. Yep. And obviously they were very successful. We're 13 and three while running him the way they did with that defense and everything. Yep. So the only thing that can really change that in my mind, as far as TDs and everything of that nature was going to be if Devontae Adams is healthy, which you should, you know, yep. if he plays a full season, I would assume that him and you know uh, Aaron Rodgers would take away a few touchdowns in the red zone because they can mix it up a little more. Then we had Josh Jacobs. You had him eighth. I had him 11th. Um, it was a really good rookie season. It's, Just super it's, safe. Yeah. That's pretty much it. He had 242 carries, 1157 touchdowns. He, he didn't catch much. Maybe that goes up in year two. How many, just, I'm good. sorry, how many carries did he have? 242 carries. 242, and he missed three games, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. He played only 13 games. Those are very good numbers. He's very safe, I believe. He's a good running back. He could even jump from this. He could. It could really just take off in year two. I think he's a good pick. And I mean, I have him slightly lower, 11th, but he's still, he's a, it's a running back one. He's there. He's, yeah. he's good. And so the next guy that could, I think, Ends up this tier is Miles Sanders, which you had higher than any of the guys we just talked about. I did. So you had him seventh. I had him thirteenth. Actually, there are two other guys we have not talked about. I have him behind. Really? Okay. And, yeah, and it's nothing I'm, against. I, I like yeah. Miles Sanders. It's not not, just, not I, a knock. I'm, not a knock. It'll but. be interesting to see who else because I'm not going to argue if you put Chubb and Aaron Jones and mm-hmm. th- that's fine. You've seen it already. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I get it. That's not a big deal. And you are. I'm making the leap of faith that he can make another stride. Right. Well, but what it, I saw. I mean, he, he was phenomenal. And he's not only phenomenal rushing the ball, he was phenomenal catching it. I think he can be a dual threat guy that, you know, is up in the top five. I mean, those guys can do both, right? And he only had, had 179 rushes. He still got over 800 yards. He only scored three touchdowns rushing. I see a world where he gets, you know, easily over 200 rushes. He gets more catches and his touchdown numbers at least double because of what he's capable of doing. I mean, he didn't score a whole lot of touchdowns. So, and once again, he, uh, I mean, how many games did he actually start? He started 11 of them. Um, technically, he was behind Jordan Howard as well, who, you know, pillaged uh, some touchdowns from him, whatever it may be. And on top of that, he had 50 receptions as a rookie, 500 yards and another three touchdowns. So I- I'm seeing this guy as dual threat. He's going to put up numbers. It, the question is, are they going to be the type of numbers I'm thinking? Is he? Am I overhyping him right out of the gate as year well, two? This is, I guess, my only worry with Sanders and why he falls at 13 is so far in the four years of Doug Peterson there, no one's consistently been the guy. I mean, so in 2016, Peterson's first year as the coach there, the leading rusher for the year was Ryan Matthews. 
It's a name from the past. Yeah, I remember him. Ryan Matthews, that was his final season in the NFL there when he had 155 carries for 661 yards. That was the leader on the team that year. 2017, the the leading rusher went to be uh, LeGarrette Blunt. Mm-hmm. Blunt had 173 carries for 766 yards that season. Not, you know, great. Not amazing. And in 2018, the leading rusher for the Eagles was Josh Adams. Josh Adams. How about that one? You got Josh Adams. Remember, do you remember that brief little Josh Adams yeah, spell? Yeah, for a moment. He had 120 carries, 511 yards. That was the leading rusher on the team. And then this past year, leading rusher was Miles Sanders, who, you know, while he was the best of the bunch so far, he had 179 carries for 818 yards. And my only worry is, are we just 100% sure they're not going to use Boston Scott a bunch too? Are we Are we just, are we for sure that Peterson Light will, will use a guy? I'm I'm not. That's the only hesitation I have. Just I I think he will, but I'm not all the way there because Boston Scott was decent. He really was, and who knows Corey Clement's still there. You know he'll get a couple. Yeah. He'll get some um some run in the backfield there too. So that's my only that's my only thing. Yeah, that's not a it's not a bad thought to have because uh, as much as I would love like Miles Sanders in my mind is clear cut number one talent and production, but. I, those guys aren't slouches. Like I don't hate, you know, Boston Scott or Corey Clement. And you're right, Corey Clement kind of hate. He's not that yeah, good. Yeah, a little bit. But I can understand <laughs> them throwing him in there. Like I feel like there's always like a pass catching. I, you know, I think Boston Scott's gonna get some get to play a little bit. I do, and but that, I don't. I still don't think that will hurt him too much because at the end of the day, where did uh, where did he end up last year? Not sure. So he he ended up at 15, right? So I, I can't imagine a world even with Boston Scott being you know, we'll say heavily used for the most part as a number two. I don't see a world where Miles Sanders doesn't get over, you know, 200 carries and he doesn't increase that to, say, 70 catches or so. I think that he is a safe top 10 guy, even with that. And if they don't use Boston Scott, if they change their ways a little bit, I think it's even higher. So maybe I'm overly excited about him. I see the potential, but I I do see your worry but um, I, I still I think it's worth. Yeah, he's the still risk. good. Yeah. All right, we got four more guys here, so let's go with them. This is one of the Austin Eckler is number twelve. You actually had him ahead of Chubb and Mixon. Yeah, I I go back and forth on this one, and you you could twist my head up because Austin Eckler is one that first of all, if you ask anyone, they have a very strong opinion on him. He's either the greatest thing since you know sliced bread, or or he's gonna you know fall off completely. Um, but hey, I, I'm after thinking about it a lot. Um, you know, he's not going to be the stereotypical running back. I, I the, can he reproduce the kind of catches that he put together last year? A lot year? of them. I, with Tyrod there, I'm thinking you kind of have to. I, I'm thinking that he is going to be like even in his own you know tweet or whatever it may be. Yeah. You know, he's going to be lined up everywhere. He is going to get a lot of touches. And I think that it will make up the difference um, depending on where you're putting him. Um, you know, maybe he wasn't getting as many uh, rushes as, say, a Chubb or something, but he'll catch so many it won't matter. He'll make it up in the in the equation. So, yes, I, I still very much like him. I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I If you wanted to, you know, spin the story that he's going to regress and, and, and Rivers was a big part of his success or whatever, I would have a hard time arguing with you. But from what I saw, I'm I'm a believer still. You know, and I'm, I think you'll be solid. I just worry that the carries aren't going to be there, which they probably won't be. But yeah, I I I think he's solid. I actually so I had him 14th, you had him 10th. There's he's he's a good pickup. I think the value on him is actually becoming a little better. He is down to 14th now, consensus and 13th ADP. So it's not like he was top 10 there for a bit. Yeah, and so it's it's a solid value now. Th- even last year, right? So. It's hard because he, he did so phenomenal, but he was seventh. Nick Chubb was sixth. And Nick Chubb only outscored him by 2.2 points. Yeah. Once again, it, it kind of comes into the whole dynamic. It's like, will how much will Cream Hunt steal from him? Yep. But anyway. All right. 13th is Kenyon Drake. So I had Drake 12th. You had him 14th. So Drake is very interesting because after he went to Arizona, he was, he was really good. Or people seem to think he was really good and remember that, right? So he was, right? He was. I brought up the numbers from week seven, 9 through 17 before. That's when he started with Arizona. 
So he was the third best back in those three, those not three, in those those weeks from week nine to seventeen. He was only behind Henry McCaffrey. When you really dig into his numbers, though, so I mean, I like Drake, and I think he could be a decent value. But I start to dig into the numbers, and you start to realize, I mean, weeks 10, 11, or, you know, game, yeah, week 10, 11, 13, 14, weren't that great. I mean, his first game when he came there, week 9, 15 carries, 110 yards, a touchdown. Good, good game. But then he went 10 for 35, 16 for 67, 13 for 31, 11 for 37. And then he exploded 22 for 137 and four touchdowns, 24 for 166 and two touchdowns, and ended it with 12 for 60 and touchdown. Those two games really drove up at where he finished, right? And that's the last thing on everyone's mind is what he did there at the end. Well, I'm not saying I, I like I do like Drake. I think if he's given the opportunity, he should be really he should be good. But I'm also not a hundred percent sold that he will just get the sole opportunity himself. I mean, remember that well, there was that one Chase Edmonds game last year. So Chase Edmonds in week seven at 27 carries, 126 yards and three touchdowns. He was really good that game too. I think Chase Edmonds is going to get the play here. It's not just going to completely go away from him. I mean, if he's healthy, he's going to get an opportunity too. I think Drake should be good, but just when you really look at the number, those those two games really skewed his final his final um, position there. I believe it's it's good, but is it as good as we remember? Yeah, he he has all he, yeah, it, he's very promising. He yep. right, he has all the talent in the world. It feels like I think he he works well with this offense, but I I, I to steal a phrase from you. I kind of have to see it. I have to see mm-hmm. more, and that is why he does slip a little bit further. And I, a lot of people are going to hype him up. And I don't necessarily, you know, discount their opinion. I think they see in him what I was seeing, like Miles Sanders or whatever yep. it may be. And they, you know, because he's a little lower, you get even a better value. Yep. But I, I do not have the uh, cojones to pick him over the other guys that we've already talked about. Yep. And I actually had him two spots higher than you did. And I'm the one who goes the... <laughs> the yeah, you went negative with that. But no, it's just, I just want to throw that out there just because I think he, he was just, that part gets forgotten. And like I was saying earlier, I don't like to pinpoint or to cherry pick numbers, but I'm going to do that in well, weeks nine through 14. So that's a yeah. decent sample size. Well, it's easier. I think when you flip it around, yeah. it's even better. I think when you, you cherry picked yeah. two games and how yeah. they completely lifted well, up his season. So nine through 14, he's sitting here with only 9.6 points per game in standard. He's below Kareem Hunt in those games. Actually, he's below Adrian Peterson in weeks nine through 14 in, in, in points per game. He was behind James White in standard scoring in weeks 9 through 14. There's a lot of guys that were better than him in that stretch. Um, not, again, just, yeah. and, <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, just, the I just is, want to make sure people aren't just like, oh, he's a sure thing RB1. He's, he's, I think he can be a good player, but just let's just, just let's definitely, wait. Yeah, definitely not a sure thing. He's and got so, a ton of yep. upside, though. All right, so final, final two players here. Number 14, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. You had him. 18th jeff yeah item ninth but I, you know what none of us can say well, this is no, no we don't know that's we, the thing we, we don't know and damien williams opting out seems to help you know the people that like edwards yeah that, Blair. that does help but okay i think it can but then again we still haven't seen him play so this is a complete guess on my part it's a complete guess on your part we haven't seen anything yet we don't know there really there's no talk you don't get to hear any any preseason chatter it's right. a guessing game. Um, the, the depth chart behind him is Darwin Thompson, Elijah McGuire, Daryl Williams, and uh, DeAndre Washington is now cheap. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. The Damian Williams news probably does. He probably will move up my rankings a little bit because the biggest thing, like they did have Kareem Hunt or whatever, and, yep. and he was the go-to back there. But this was obviously a handful of years ago, you know, you know, you know, yep. pr- you know before Mahomes. And, um, my biggest question was, are you going to take Damian Williams are you going to, and the rookie, and then are you going to use them like you did uh, last year with, you know, Shady and and Damian Williams? And they pretty much split carries, mm-hmm. and you just, you know, use whoever you can because that's not the focal point of your offense, right? Yep. You, you use whoever is kind of hot. Um, but with, you know, the guy that we know is used to the offense and can get enough done in that offense when he is not, no longer going to play, it does change the complexion a little bit. All right. Final guy. Number 15, Todd Gurley. 
15th for both of us. And the thing is, I like I like Todd Gurley this year. I like getting him as my running back, too. We talked about him a lot in this offseason. Numbers were down last year. I'm going to blame a lot of that on the offensive line and just the offense in general there in Los Angeles wasn't very good. He still, though, got 14 touchdowns last year. He's just He's got double-digit touchdowns in four of his five seasons in the league. Year one, he had 10. In his third year, he had 19. And in 2018, he had 21 touchdowns. And last year, he had 14 touchdowns. I think he's going to get in the end zone again. He's going to be the guy there with Atlanta. He is. It's it's his backfield. But who's behind him? Is it just still Edo Smith? Is Edo Smith behind him? I think we know at this point Edo Smith really can't play. I mean, he and what? So after Edo, or is it um, Brian Hill or Quadre <laughs> yeah. Olison? Which one is it? I forgot it's, about Brian. Hill. Remember the, it's, the, all three of those guys? I've heard yeah. that like, none of them have done anything. Brian Hill. I think I started Brian Hill one week. God, that was a bad week. Um, was the race for who's going to be the next starter in um, ATL? Gurley's going to get all the opportunity in the world. As simple as that. I guess there is still knee concerns. That wasn't why I believe he had a poor season last year. I don't really think it was anything to do with the knee. I think it was just a bad offense. But Gurley, number 15. There's really all I got for that. Not much more to say about Gurley. I think he can be good. He could be. He could end up being a steal. Yeah. All right. That's it. Yeah. Before we go, well, I did actually put, uh, ah, yes. as I was putting our video together. Check what? us out. YouTube.com slash yes. fantasy football profit. Make sure you go subscribe, watch our videos, see, see our faces. It's wonderful. This is uh, what happens when I get really tired and I'm putting these together. Then I'm, I'm starting to have fun. <laughs> and in there, I just said, you know, is anyone listening? If you put this in there, I'll read whatever you, uh, whatever you type. And uh, they had a really, a couple of really, really good ones. So uh, Joe Saviano, um, he says, Craig, repeat after me. And I promise, so you have to repeat oh, it. Oh, God. What, so what does he say? I will pick up Philip oh. R- Philip Rivers off waivers for my super flex league. So I, okay. So, Joe, I will pick up Philip Rivers off the waivers in my super flex, flex league if he ever makes it to the waivers. How about that? Because I, are you talking, I mean, because I have two quarterbacks. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I should have a third. I'll pick up Rivers if he becomes available, which he probably will because he's not going to be very good. And then, and then this one with, <laughs> I like the little dig at the end. <laughs> and then this one uh, I find really funny, even though I it, terrible. Uh, Andy Robinson, uh, I'm assuming he thought you were going to be the one saying this, but it says <laughs> Jeff. Jeff gets all of his fancy advice from the counselor. Oh <laughs> no! And I was like immediately, I was like, those are fighting words. Do you? Yeah, I wish I knew. I don't know. What is he? Uh, do you, have you heard anything from him? Do you know what he's spouting off on this year? Is it? No. <laughs> I don't either. I, I, I'm sure I do hit uh, on a few of he's them. Making, we all do overlap. He's making shower TikTok videos with his fantasy rants. No. I did. Yeah, I saw some of that. I, I think, think we've gone only, too far. I, yeah, I know. I think the, I think the only one that I do agree. Nothing but love, Joe. Nothing but love. Yeah. The one I did. Yeah, I got nothing. He does his thing. <laughs> He does his thing. He is a he's a he's a personality. I'll give him that. That I, that he is. Yeah. That he is. I think I that did see something about Tannehill. So he might that might be the only one I can think of at the moment. Did he say to draft Tannehill over Lamar? No. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be something he would say, and then he would get a a, a ton of like retweets or something. <laughs> so yeah. Hey, you know what? Yeah, man. Dude. He, he does his thing, man. Yeah. No I hate. I uh, will say he does his thing. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I like my picks better, but I'm sure he likes his as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure. Um, no, he does not have Tannehill ranked ahead of Lamar, though. That was a little – he has Tannehill ninth, which is actually quite high. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so that is the one we definitely – And Deshaun Watson 11th. Okay. I mean, I, yeah, okay. It's just extreme. <laughs> Whenever I think I'm high on someone, hey, I, someone else. You is know high. what? He doesn't like Carson Wentz either, Jeff. I don't dislike Carson. He Wentz. He has Carson Wentz 19th. You guys are about the same. He has Gardner Minshew ahead of Carson Wentz. Well, I definitely don't have that. Are you sure? Hundred percent. Minshew. <laughs> actually, no. Oh, yeah, we're just gonna turn into a. Now I'm actually interested. Now I really actually want to take a look. Leonard Fournette seven. You notice he didn't make our top fifteen. Yeah. Jonathan Taylor, 11th. Well, that's more you than me. Del- Delvin Cook, how low? 18th. <laughs> Why? Why? This is the kind of stuff that 
he'll do, and I feel like he gets some notoriety. But I there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just a crazy person. <laughs> but 18th, I don't even get. I don't even understand. Hey, that. he has DK 12th. Do, well, okay, it, it is. It's just if you like someone, he, he'll amp it up or whatever. It's kind of. It's D- always Debo, fun to look Debo's at. Debo's but... 13th. Well, I'm okay. Uh, maybe he hasn't. Odell is 27th. Still not believing in it. Not the only LaVisca one. Chanel's is 35th. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that information. I don't either, actually. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. But anyway, there you go, Andy Robinson. Maybe there. maybe we did agree on a few things. I, I had no idea now that we dug into it. Yeah, you do have a few things you you and him are very similar on. So okay. he's a Jonu Smith fan. Jonu Smith is 11th. Look at that. Jeff. Okay. Actually, that is pretty darn close then. That is the closest one we've had so far. I'm starting to think, Jeff. Don't, don't even go there. John, John R. Smith, though, you know, people are sleeping. I really do think that. And But sadly enough, you're the one that turned me on to John R. Smith. Interesting. All right. Yeah. That's it. We'll be back later this week with part two of our running back rates. Talk to you guys then.